What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video, we are going to be talking about how you guys can pretty much, I'm not gonna say abuse, but how you guys can make the most of position locks in NBA 2K20, my team. And to be honest, more so than anything else, this is gonna be a video on what to look out for and what not to do with position locks. Because I think people going in blind and going out the same uh, strategies as previous years in my team in terms of picking up players are going to make some huge, huge mistakes that could cost them a lot of MT early on. As you guys know, I am seriously, seriously against position locks. But again, if you guys are fans of the channel, you guys know the famous phrase, adapt or die. So while I'm definitely not a fan of position locks, I genuinely don't want them in the game. I think they're gonna cause so many more problems than they're gonna fix. I, they're in the game, so I'm gonna have to adapt the way I play, and you guys are gonna have to adapt the way you play. So in this video, I'm going to be basically describing or telling you guys tactics of getting the most out of these position locks, because let's be real, the way we play 2K is going to be almost the same this year as it was last year, except no longer are we going to be using small forwards at point guard. Straight up, well, initially anyway. So yeah, anyway, the point guard position. This is the one position where I think position locks themselves have done a good thing. We may actually see point guards being used. And I don't mean we're gonna be seeing that many point guards being used, but we're gonna be seeing some. And it's a lot better than none that we saw last year. Like, Karolenko was too good at point guard, with all the fame dimer, LeBron was too good at point guard. We saw no point guards last year. The odd player who was unbelievable, Curry, or I don't know, John Wall was actually a card I really liked, and then obviously Simmons was used, and Magic Johnson at the start of the year. So, how you guys can make the most of the position locks with the point guard position? What I would keep an eye out for is two guards that are six foot seven plus, and also have a secondary position point guard. I don't think it will be too many. I genuinely don't. But one possibility early in the game is that T Mac. If the team I card, I know he starts off as a two guard, but they say with evolutions you can unlock secondary positions. We all, actually not we all know, T Mac did occasionally play a point guard. He also did play a little bit at the small forward for the Houston Rockets, so it's not necessarily a right or wrong position if he is small forward. And with the way 2K have been working with it, it probably will be small forward as well. But always keep an eye out for that. So with point guards, this is the one position where I would say it's not the biggest deal in the world to go for height because a great six foot three point guard is probably isn't gonna be that much worse than say a six six point guard. And we're not gonna be seeing any incredible six seven plus point guards um, for too long. We'll be seeing them. Don't worry, we'll be seeing six seven point guards. Not that many incredible ones until the first person unlocks the Penny Hardaway for the token reward, which realistically till people get that card consistently will probably be December. So it's not something to worry about. At the two guard position, do not, under any circumstances, play someone that is six foot three or smaller, under six foot four. And even at six foot four, I would say uh, probably not the best player, the best uh, thing to pick up. I would not advise you guys to use a two guard that is smaller than six foot six. I would not advise you guys to use a player apart from your point guard that is smaller than six foot six. But if you're looking at six three and below, so if you're looking at a Donovan Mitchell type card, unless he's got secondary position point guard, which he might do, I have no idea, steer clear away from those undersized two guards. Steer clear away from them. I will be, like there's no point in me talking about releases on cards because as you guys saw with Carmelo Anthony, it's something that I'm gonna actually talk about in my video tomorrow, or I probably will actually upload another video today because I'm probably pulling an all-nighter, but this is one thing, like, we can't look, talk about releases yet, but height will be a factor. Height will always be a factor in 2K. So do not go for those small two guards. So what I would advise you guys to do is look for maybe a 6'8 plus small forward that can also play at the two. So potentially a Paul George type player. Like if, we, if you can get Paul George to play at the two, that would be incredible. Because Paul George did play at the two in Indiana, but I think he'll be a uh, small forward, power forward. Or if he is just small forward, him and Kawhi may not be able to play with each other, which is a bit crazy. But I would advise you guys to look more so at the bigger, at the kind of small forwards playing down, if they can, rather than actual two guys. Ty Thompson's a good shout, six foot seven. Jimmy Butler is a good shout, six foot eight. But 
Again, like the normal height of a two guard, which is like 6'5", six, 6'4", six, I would steer clear from them, including Dwayne, the Dwayne Wade card. Because, let's be real, anyone who says Dwayne Wade has been good in previous years, use them at the point guard position. So now that you can't do that, yeah, he's going to be seriously, seriously underpowered. And it is going to be the exact same with the small forward position. So, basically, in ter with position locks, it means to say... I'm guessing 6'6 six, six and smaller, small forward positions will be very, very not great. Unless they can go down and play at the two. Um, cards like Dr. J, for example, if he's small forward, power forward, may not be great because of his height. And also, someone like a John Havlicek, a 6'5 small forward, will be almost useless. A um, Paul Pressey will be absolutely useless, a 6'4 small forward. But um, yeah, the exact same tips for the two guys and small forwards. Except... I would advise you guys to use small forwards as small forward because I wouldn't necessarily say moving a power forward down unless it's someone like an Andre Karolenko. And again, that'll only be the case this year if his release is the same as last year. Because with the way with what they did to Melo's release, you just have no idea what's going on at releases. So now we are having to look at the power forward and center positions. So this is going to be one that is interesting. So the power forward position, honestly. This is the position I think you've got the most flexibility in what you can use. Because depending on your style, a lot of centers will have secondary position power forward. So you're gonna be able to use a lot of actual power forwards of power forward. And there's like six, eight and smaller. Uh, sorry, six, seven and smaller are not gonna be useful. Six, eight and bigger, six, eight's fine for power forward. So, but cards like Draymond Green, Zion Williamson will not be great, trust me. Trust me on this. Until those guys can speed boost, they won't be great. However, you can go at the power forward position and use someone to run your entire offense through. Use a Giannis Antetokounmpo. Use a Ben Simmons. Like, there is so much flexibility at that power forward position. If you want to run with two centers, and there's a big center that has secondary position power forward, then go ahead. Use your height. If you guys want to run a stretch four, use a shooter. If you guys want to run with a small forward a power forward most of them are secondary position power forward so go ahead and do that if you guys want to run with a primary ball handler you better believe simmons and Giannis can be used to power forward position so the best way like there's no way to abuse um position locks in my opinion with the power forward position however i would suggest to just do whatever you want like literally it's the one position i can't even give any tips there's so many options just do not use anyone six seven or smaller that is basically it and now we are on to the last position which is the center position. So the thing is with the center position, which could be really awkward, is I've seen it with Dave Cowens, and I think with Wes Unseld in the token awards. As far as I know, those two guys are just able to play the center position. Those guys are six foot nine and six foot seven. There is no way that they're going to be usable at the center position. Could they be usable at power forward? Yes, maybe. And Unseld's case, probably best down, move, best we move down to the small forward position, but Obviously, they can't be used there. So at the center position, I'm going to say 6'10 and smaller. Maybe the Alonzo Mourning is going to be useful at the very start of the year because he's a diamond playing against Sapphires. But 6'10 and smaller, I'd steer clear from them. I honestly, honestly would. I think the center position is going to be a position that not a lot of people are going to use power forwards up at center because of how big a difference height makes. I don't think you're going to be able to get much of an advantage by using tall centers because that's what everyone does but what i would suggest you guys to always do is make sure you look at the um, make sure you look at the height of your center your center could have the best stats in the world but if he's six foot eight he's going to be killed he's going to be absolutely destroyed and there's no ifs or buts about it there's no argument being made oh well people uh, can't play centers uh players out of position so small players are useful no 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 the position locks help point guards be better. They don't help small centers be useful. They actually make small centers useless. So yeah, that is basically a breakdown for all the positions. What position locks does is make, like I'm saying this right now, it will fix the problem of using out of position point guards initially anyway. And that's great. That is something that is a problem and it is something that is fixed. What it has also done is meant that undersized two guards that are only two guards are unusable. Undersized small forwards that can't play down to two guard, unusable. Undersized power forwards that can't play down small forward, unusable. Actually, undersized power forwards in general, especially early, unusable. Undersized centers that can't play down power forward, unusable. This has made, this has actually rendered more cards unusable. Actually, 
No, it probably hasn't. Whereas most of the point guard position was worthless, now a small section of every other position is now worthless. So the position locks has created a whole new dynamic of players. It's created a whole bunch of other problems. And for me, I think that those problems outweigh the fix of running people out of position at point guard. However, some of you guys don't, and that's fair enough. This is just my opinion. That's just why I don't like position locks. But again, there are definitely ways to abuse position locks and there are definitely things to look out for. So you've got to pay attention more than ever to height. Because back in the day, if you had say a Dwayne Wade card, you could say, okay, I'll play on point guard. Now you can't, now you can't. So you've got to think more and more and more about height and position locks actually makes height an even bigger factor than ever. It, like height per position means more than ever it did before because if you're undersized for your position you can no longer play down so it does cause an awful lot of problems but yeah this is something you gotta watch out for because this will change everything in my team it will change absolutely everything so anyway that's the video thank you guys for watching please like comment and subscribe